<laughs> All right, there we go. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so what I wanted to talk about is um, the materials and where to buy them because really you can find the uh, patterns and everything. I'll show you where to buy those too, but the materials is really what makes a corset good or not. Um, so I wanted to talk about that. So the two materials that I have used in the past that work really well is um, super spandex or cotton cotille. Both of those fabrics are really, um, sorry, there we go, really strong and they give the structure that uh, holds up the corset and whether it's a corset that you wear like a period corset underneath clothing or a corset that you wear on top like um, cosplay kind of or bridal kind of corset you need to have the structure on the inside of the corset before you add any kind of fancy material to the outside um, Cotton cotille is what this is over on the side here. It's kind of like a, I don't know if anybody's sewn with cotton cotille before, but it's kind of like a, um, a woven, like really stiff cotton. Um, and it's, a, it's not really thick, but it holds up better than um, say like denim does. Denim stretches, as we all know, over time. And cotille works really well um for non-stretch fabric and then on the top i put the super spandex i've worked you guys know i've done um corsets for aerial performers and circus performers but of course they need to be able to move and stretch and stuff so what we use is the jumbo spandex like the uh, football pants spandex like that really thick stretchy spandex and that is for um, if you want to use like a stretch velvet or, you know, a stretch, they have like a stretch fabric called liquid metal, even that looks like metal. Um, but no matter what you use on the outside, it's good to have that structure on the inside first. And I'll show you where you can get those kinds of fabrics. Yeah. Now, when you're making a corset, do you feel like it's easier to make it out of stretch material or, or I put it like this, is it more forgiving with stretch material or with the um, cotton council? Oh, it's so much easier actually with the stretch okay. because um, when I've done it before and I'll show you some pictures here, I didn't even have to use boning because the um, seam allowances of the stretch um, fabric plus the outer fabric that I used. I, I used a, um, a stretch velvet. When I folded open the seam allowances, they were so thick, they hold the corset up themselves. And they do, they are very forgiving. Um, but if people are looking to make period stuff like this picture here to wear underneath garments, then you need like the more stiff structured type of fabric, if that makes sense. Um, And this one is one of those. This one has, um, it's just a like um, a belt style corset. It doesn't go over her chest at all. And this has the super spandex underneath and then the velvet spandex on top. And this lacing is just fake. It just has little tiny pieces of uh, ribbon. I mean, yeah, ribbon here to lace it up just for show. It actually zips up the back. so. We didn't even have to lace her into it, um, but it looks very structured and it holds its shape and it's it's really pretty kind of way to do a corset. And then you flat line it. So flat lining is just so you cut out each one of your panels with the cotille or the super spandex. And then you lay, you cut out another of your outer fabric and you lay that onto each panel and you sew them together um, before you put the pieces together. So flatlining, if you guys, I don't know if you know that term, but it's just, you create your own fabric with a bunch of layers of one of several fabrics. 
I hope that made sense. <laughs> So it's kind of like you've got your outer fabric, the stiffer fabric in the center, and then the inner fabric. Yes, and the inner inner fabric is that stiffer fabric. You really only need two layers, um, whatever's the structure on the inside, and then whatever your you know your fashion fabric or whatever is going to be on the outside. Okay. <clears throat> so. Um, for the extra pieces, like if you were doing um, one of these kind of inner, these kinds of corsets, then there's different kinds of boning to use. There's, of course, the little grommets um, and the laces, which you can just use shoelaces. <laughs> if you get like boot laces, you could get really long boot laces and use those. And then this thing is called a busk. It's not necessary you don't have to use one of those that's what she has here this is the front of the corset it's just an easy way if you just keep it laced all the time um, to get in and out of it right here uh, you just have to loosen these a little bit before you um, button it up here but it's not a necessary thing to have and this the way that they have it laced here is a really good way to lace it you start at the top and you work to the middle and you start at the bottom and you work to the middle. So there's two sets of laces, if you can see that. And it gives you a really nice um, uh, effect here. Plus it uh, holds you in a lot better and you don't have laces sticking out the top or the bottom you have to tuck in. And the boning here, these are steel boning, the white ones are different sizes usually they're either a quarter inch wide or a half an inch wide really a half an inch is way too big quarter inch is usually what people use which is right here you can see it inside the corset and then these ones are the spiral steel um, these ones are a lot easier to use and to alter so i definitely recommend using the spiral because after time the steel ones will bend like this and then kind of start to be misshapen. Same with the um, nylon. The nylon can get hot from your body, the nylon uh, boning, and start to be weird and <laughs> start to poke out at the top and bottom, you know. I'm sure you guys have done that. <laughs> um, but the spiral ones keep their shape pretty well because they're meant to bend, but they, but they um, hold up the corset really well. And then the cording bias is just that little piece on the top and the bottom right here. And it's just a bias strip that they, that they sew on and they put cording. This is particular to the corset shop I used to work at. This is where these pictures are from. Um, they would put the cording in and then let it come out the front of the corset so you can cinch in the top right here and tie it right. It's just an added little detail that's helpful, but it's not necessary. The cording just helps to finish the top and the bottom of the corset. Um, so it fits between the two layers. Correct. Yeah. After you sew your whole corset together, this is the final thing is putting this on the top. And it helps too with this piece where the boning is. So the boning doesn't poke out too. It's like a nice finish. And you can see how now these are, these are the ones that are the structured corsets that you wear like under period clothing. Um, and you see how they did these rows of stitches here that also helps with the, cause I know Nicole, you were talking about making the hole and putting the grommet in and then the hole just keeps stretching. It does that. Um, so that's why they have these layers of, um, stitching here to help that from not happening. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> so there's um, three different types of corsets. These ones are ones that I have done before, and that's the period corset, the one that goes underneath. I mean, you can also build, build these for outside, but this is really 
meant to be underneath a garment to make that, you know, period shape. Um, and so you can see she doesn't have a busk in the front here. It's just two uh, rows of um, the boning. And then this one is the waist corset, which you could make out of stretch or out of the cotille as well. And then the cosplay kind of uh, corset that's just supposed to look fancy and not necessarily, you know, hold you in so much. Okay, yeah, and here's the different kinds of boning. So this is the nylon, and as you probably have seen at the fabric store, you can buy it in a roll or off of a roll like this. And the problem with that is that it is shaped to this circular piece. Um, so when you use this nylon, if you do use nylon, you would, um, instead of having this go against the body, you would, you know, turn it the other way so it doesn't, like, it's misshapen, basically. You could heat up it uh, between, like, pieces of fabric to try to make it lay flatter, but... Yeah, I don't really like using the nylon, as you can tell. Um, it also kind of comes apart in little tiny strips, and it starts to poke through your fabric, too. Um, the steel glue tip, this is this part right here. It's glued on the end. Um, this is what mostly they use for corsets. But over time, it does rub here, like on the top of the fabric, and can poke through as well. You can't really alter them very easily. Um, you can cut them shorter and then round it and then buy that glue stuff, which they do sell, and make your own size. Um, but other than that, they come in certain lengths. Um, I did a costume course at one time because the girl on stage was getting dressed as part of the show, and I used zip ties. I don't... I. It was easy. I don't know if that's oh wow. I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, I've wow. seen that before. Somebody it was like a hack. Yeah, and oh, they were they're wow. already straight, and yeah. they were easy to get. And yeah, they're straight. And you that's can, the point too. And yeah. you can pull them in and out if you want to remove them. But that's true. Not very professional. I've never heard of that, but that's I. I've never heard of that. That's pretty cool. I've seen a lot of YouTubers do that too. Who does it, Nicole? I've seen a handful of YouTubers do it. Um, yeah. If you type in corset making, some of them don't bother to buy the actual like stuff, or they just have zip ties, so they use those instead. Wow. And like wow. temporarily on a mock-up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As opposed to using the like expensive stuff. Um, the third one is the spiral steel metal tip. <laughs> With these, you can cut if you have the right kind of cutters, you know. Um, and then you can buy the tips as well. I have a question. Yes. I have a question. Okay, they was talking about those zip, the zip line things, the zip thing. So, would, but they wouldn't hold the structure like these would, do they? I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of am wondering. Would make it, I would think they would just make it stiff and like stand up, but not necessarily like hold you in, I guess. They, they do yeah. hold the structure. I don't know how long they will last. Yeah. The one I made was not to hold a girl in. It was just to make her look like she was in her corset and getting dressed. But it did look oh, yeah. correct. Okay. Yeah, anything okay. with plastic, it does heat with your body. Your body heats it up and then it gets distorted over time and you have to replace it. That's the only thing. And how bad do these steel ones hurt the body? These ones don't. They do uh, shape to your body. These ones do. Um, they're kind of they like hurt? using plastic, but more stiff. No, uh-uh. Okay. Okay. When um, people who buy corsets, like when I used to work at this corset shop and people would try them on, that would be the, the first thing they say is they're surprised how comfortable they are. Anybody 
um, ever tried on like a corset that has boning in it, like steel boning, it holds your body up. It helps your back, you know, be straighter and all of that. And it's surprisingly comfortable. <laughs> Um, the other things, of course, are the grommets, um, the lacing, which I said you can buy either, you can buy it on, there's several places you can buy it, and then the busk if you want to use one of these. They're not that hard to put on um, where this little um, eye thing is. You just put a buttonhole right here on the fabric, and the same with the little eye um, you can punch a little hole and, and put it through and it, and it stays pretty well, but they're not necessary if you didn't want to use them. Sonia said, is there a preferred grommet size? So the grommet size, yeah, these, I bought grommets that were, I believe a half an inch. I would not use those teeny tiny ones just because they're they fall out very easily. There's not much that they're holding on to. Um, the grommets that I used, I actually bought from a shop in Seattle called Seattle Fabrics, and they specialize in outerwear. Um, they have all sorts of belting and buckles and everything, but grommets too in different sizes because they specialize in boating, like sails and stuff, and grommets go in sails. So the ones that I get are usually a little bit bigger, like the half an inch size. And you can also buy the tools to set the grommets and to cut the holes. There's a little, um, it's not an awl, but it's like a little tool that'll cut a hole that's just slightly smaller than the hole of the grommet. So when it goes in, it's like pushing that hole open a little bit. So it's tighter, it has a tighter grip on the garment. And it's all about um, also having those layers where you put the grommets and not putting it into a thin fabric or just a couple of layers. It's going to be a couple of layers plus the seam allowances that are folded back. So it's like four layers. And then these are the tools here. So this is the grommet setter. Um, the Let's see, the male would go down this way and face up. Then your fabric would go on top. And then the female side would go on top of that. And then you put this little piece on there and then hammer it. Um, I use, I do use a, a mallet just because of the noise is very loud. Um, but you also have to test it how many times you hit it because you can crack them no matter how what quality they are if you hit it too many times it'll split um the grommet on the other side and you'll have to start over so testing this stuff always first <laughs> with test fabric to see how many times you need to hit it and just stop it's so easy just to hit it some more <laughs> and then you crack the grommet and then it's you know you're in trouble but this is the you can see the little hole on the bottom of that um that other thing that's where that's the piece that can uh cut the whole of your fabric and same thing you use the mallet and you you um hit that tool and it'll cut the hole what and do you the, put it on on to do that because i have one yeah. of those, but i don't know i i didn't know how to use it yeah i use it i i have used it on a mat before but then of course it just cuts up the mat um if you have like an old mat rotary mat Okay. Then um, you can cut it into pieces. So you have like little squares of rotary mat that's just for that if it's an old one. Or I've also just put down layers of felt and and on a hard surface and done it that way as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, you don't want to cut up your table. You can use a cutting board too. like go to the thrift store and get a cutting board and use that. I put it on the floor. Because once you cut it through the fabric, you're going to stop. You're not going to keep hammering it, you know. Um, and you of course, you put it on the floor. Yeah, um, on my porch on the concrete. 
on the porch. On the concrete. And that's where I... Because um, I, I, I bought... I'm sorry, go ahead, Brenda. I just, I laid out and I, I put dramas in a lot of things. I haven't, only did one or so. But um, I, I lay it out on my concrete porch and just beat it in there. Just make sure the floor is clean. I bought a piece of butcher block. Butcher block, is that what you think? Yeah, I bought a piece or of butcher like block because I just, yeah. just got my. So, yeah. Yeah, or like a little piece of wood or something like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, eventually they will go dull like any kind of cutting tool, um, but it takes a, a while for that to happen. So basically just anything you don't you don't mind messing up. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I put interfacing on here, but not any kind of glueable interfacing because you don't want to get glue on your tools. It just ruins them. Um, bone boning casing, which is what this is. So you could build your corset and then top stitch this casing like over the um, seam allowances instead of using the seam allowances for the casing. That's usually what people do is use the seam allowances and put the boning in inside the seam allowances between the, you know, inner fabric and the outer fabric. Or you can just buy this, which you can put the boning in and then top stitch on the edge. Well, top stitch at first, then put the boning in. <laughs> or you have to wear goggles so you don't break a needle. Oh, Valerie, that boning uh, casing, is that that's different than just bias tape. Yes, it is. It's completely uh, like, like enclosed. It's not, there's no open parts to it. <coughs> Sorry. Um, Sonia, pattern. did you get your interfacing question answered? Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 thank you. Yeah. Um, well, you, you mentioned interfacing, but then you also said when you use the grommets, it's going to be on all of these layers of thick fabric. So you still need interfacing, even though you're going to have all the thick fabric. No, no, I, no, I'm only saying that for like this cosplay because this satin is oh, for the thin. spandex. Yeah. Like, okay. like, like either that or like a brocade or a satin that's really thin. You might need like another layer sewn in there, like a, okay. like an interfacing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, and patterns you can get anywhere you can get I, I mean really anywhere simplicity mccall's you know, like all of those have corset patterns like these ones are obviously just the waist ones like the really cute ones and you can see that um there's not a lot of structure or thickness here because they're kind of look a little flimsy i guess um they are cute though but like these this one i think was a mccall's pattern so they have these patterns, these period patterns too. Um, and then you can find them even on Amazon and Etsy. So anywhere. Um, and I forgot to mention too, the other piece, I don't know if I put it on here, that goes um, underneath the lacing is there was another piece under here. It's called a modesty panel. So when you're laced up, you're not like you know, all your skin is showing right here and you're getting pinched and everything. There's like just a piece of a rectangle fabric that's the same fabric, just top stitched right along here. And it just go, it just lays right there so that it's covering, you know, your skin and stuff. Do you know of a, a pattern company that makes um, corsets specifically for plus size? Um, actually, all of the corsets, like those ones I showed, will have them also in plus size, too. I haven't come across anything that um, is doesn't have that available. <clears throat> uh, of course, thrifted fabrics. <laughs> you could buy stretch velvet, you know, like velvet dress, those stretch velvet dresses um silk satin 
brocade denim, which I wouldn't use um, as the understructure, but it could definitely go on top. Um, wool felt flowers like to decorate it, like if it was a cosplay kind of one. Um, leather, you can from bags or leather from anything, trims from garment, hardware from bags, obviously. You guys know <laughs> what to look for. Oh, it's just ideas. <laughs> I and think then, that fabric that you showed, the <clears throat> cotil, the cotton cotil, uh -huh. the texture of that from the picture you showed looks like um, some curtains. Like I've seen like things like some curtains with that type of texture. So I've never seen the actual fabric that you're talking about. But yeah. do you think like have you ever seen a curtain with that same type of fabric or is it or am I just seeing the texture and thinking of something else? I think it's just the texture because okay. it's almost it's not it's not hmm, it's really stiff cotton. OK, I haven't really seen it second hand. Now I have to look for sure. But um, yeah, I haven't more stiff like burlap yeah but you got to keep in mind too if you're buying any of the understructure fabric new you're not going to buy that much corsets are very small <laughs> the pieces that you sew together are very small so you know half a yard depending on the width um a yard would be a lot <laughs> so and they come actually the cotille comes in all different colors too and that's another thing you want to make sure that you, if you buy like an understructure fabric, you don't want it to be like black and then your top fabric be like a light pink. It will show through the fabric and change the color of your outer fabric. So you want to go with a lighter color if you're doing, you know, a lighter color on the outside. Um, and these are the places to get these fabrics. Obviously, you could find the super spandex at the thrift store. <laughs> I don't know if I've really paid attention to that, um, but Richard the Thread is a company in um, California that they specialize in corsetry and the materials for corsets. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of them, um, but I like their website because it's not overwhelming. It's just the basics of what you need. Uh, spandex World is where I got all the spandex that I used for circus and What's good about them is that you can um, get swatches of what they have. I think up to 20 swatches. I think they're like a dollar a piece or something like that. If you didn't know if you like the color or the thickness or the shininess or whatever, and they'll just send them all to you and then you can pick from there. Um, Etsy, of course, they do have corset supplies, um, lacing, you know, all of the tools that you need to make it. Seattle Fabrics is where I get my grommets and grommet setters, although you can get it at Richard the Thread and Etsy too, but it's just that I've used them there and I, I know what the quality is and it's really good quality. And you buy them in like big bags of, you know, sets of grommets and you can get, they have black, they have silver, they have gold. I think they have white as well. Um, available. They probably have other colors, but that's the basics of just the basic places have them. Joann's, I would only really get the um, patterns from there and all the like little notions you might need. Amazon had patterns too. They actually had corset mm -hmm. supplies, but I read a lot of the reviews and it was like, these caps don't fit this <laughs> this steel boning or you know stuff like that because it's not their specialty so i wouldn't necessarily buy that stuff there and then of course the thrift store for everything else so i have a question yeah um, um i don't know if you i don't think you mentioned a brand because i get these like grommets in these big bag things but the quality yeah. doesn't look that good to me you yeah. know so i'm wondering what I do you recommend yeah i don't know about brands actually I really don't know because I just get a that? bag of, yeah. of grommets. <laughs> but of why grommets. I go with Seattle Fabrics is because they specialize in like outer, like hiking gear and uh, sails for your boats. And that has to be high quality because 
you know, it's safety issues, right? So that's why I recommend them. Um, Seattle, you said fabrics. Seattle Fabrics you recommend? Seattle Fabrics, I would, yes. And Richard the Thread too, because that's where all the theaters go to to buy like a lot of the corset um, supplies. He has all of those things as well. Yeah. I don't know if I said everything, but yeah, <laughs> that was all. That was awesome. I hope I am. I hope it made sense. <laughs> it made sense. Yes. <laughs> hey, Hillary. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that was awesome. Thank you so much, Valerie. You guys yeah. go ahead, uh, Carolyn. Oh, yes. So I wanted to... Um, could you talk a little bit about upcycling? Because um, I got this from a friend, you know, it's not the best quality kind of thing, but how do you recommend we upcycle this? Because yeah, well, to start it's out, because of the idea of making right. a bodice, I mean, making a right. corset sounds scary, but what can I do yeah. with this? Yeah, I mean, I guess I didn't talk about that. If you do have secondhand corsets like that, um, I would recommend replacing the boning because most of the time it's warped from whoever wore it before. Even the curves in their body, whether they're steel or nylon, they do get warped over time. And then two, what happens in the very top of the corset, um, that glue, if it's the steel ones, will start rubbing on the fabric and poking through. So um, just replacing them in general is a good way to start. Um, because if you were just to use like a piece of it, like the back where the lacing is, is really great. You could just cut that piece off and just use that. Uh, that's already, yeah, exactly. So to replace the boning, what would she do? Just cut a slit on each top of each one, take it out and stick another one in and restitch it. No, it should have um, the seam allowances usually are folded over and then top stitched down. So you would open up that top stitching to get the boning out because it's usually finished at the top with the piping. Is there piping at the top that's finishing the top of the corset and the bottom of the corset? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You could unstitch yeah, the piping. piping. Yeah, you could unstitch that too. It depends right. on whatever. You just, whenever sewing, this is another thing, <laughs> a corset that has boning in it, you want to wear something on your eyes because, I mean, if your needle slips and hits the bone, it's going to, you know, oh. break and fling. So you just have to be careful when sewing with boning inside of a corset. And, and do you recommend putting fabric on or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, you could. Yeah, that's what's cool about having something like that. You can definitely drape some new fabric on top or embellish it somehow. But when you do, would you sew along these lines as well? Or you just... You can right or you can hand stitch it too, depending on how brave you are sewing with something like right. boning on it. <laughs> and just break a bunch of needles and... <laughs> yeah, no fun. I see. Woo! That's really pretty, though. It's it like, right? like a lacy kind of see through. Cute. Hot mama. Yeah. <laughs> I don't but think the, this the is boning proper. looks good. That, I mean, looking it? at it, it doesn't look like it's worn that much. I don't yeah. think it is worn at all. So yeah, no, it I, looks good. Yeah, it's just straight but up. You, you, would, you would know because it kind of. Yeah, no, it's out no on the bottom or on the top, you it's, know, it kind of looks funky. It's bone straight, no pun intended. And <laughs> and um, but the only the my problem is the fabric itself is not very nice. And it, it's like this cheap yeah. looking whatever it is. Yeah. So so I kind of wanted to put something more interesting over it. Yeah, you can. I would recommend hand sewing the pieces though. Yeah. I see. Makes Onto sense. it, yeah. Any other questions? How many people are going to make a corset now? <laughs> I know, Nicole. <laughs> I was already <laughs> going. Yeah. yeah. I need it for a costume at the end of the month, so I'm kind of on a time crunch now. 
I bought a corset because I was doing those 1890 costumes. I can't cinch myself in. I end up with yeah. exactly the same measurements. So well, why bother? That's, that's what that busk is kind of for. So you can lace it and then. Lace. No, I had, I got the one. It has the busk, but when I pull and pull and pull, and when I try to tie a knot, tie it, it slips. Oh. And with the thickness of the corset, I might take in an inch, but I've added an inch. So they they don't work for me. I it's, I need somebody to help me. Yeah. And I was gonna <laughs> say you need oh. a friend. <laughs> yeah. Optical illusion anyway. It only it it really yeah. depends on how it's actually like shaped because it only pulls in so much squish. If you've got more muscle than squish, it's not gonna pull anything in. That's true. Nicole, are you making a full corset or just like the waist kind of corset? I don't know. I'm probably going to try for a full corset. I just have to figure out which pattern I want to use. Um, a friend of mine who also is into costuming, I don't think she ever did it professionally, but I'm not sure, um, had sent me a pattern. And it's like, I want to try this, but I'm terrified that I don't have enough time to get it finished before the end of the month. Whereas I'm comfortable with the other one, but I know I have to just make it smaller. That's easy enough. I just have to cut the pattern a little bit, uh, a little shorter. So it depends on how much time I side I have. Yeah, it's not necessarily. They don't take that long, lo that long, only because they're just little pieces. But it's of course the finishing, how you want it to look, is what takes the time. It takes time to do. Is there a better uh, kind for like specific body types? Well, it just depends on what kind of look you're going for because there are so many different kinds the kinds that are completely flat in the front the ones that are really shaped um i don't know it just depends on what you want to look like you uh, can achieve all of it <laughs> one thing i've noticed when i've done costumes with corsets is a lot of corsets people end up straight up and down if you want a if you have a waist or you want a waist you need the if you're buying it, if you're making it for yourself, your measurements are going to take care of that. But if you're buying one, you want one that's wasp wasted because it's not going to be straight up and down. It's going to have a silhouette for a waist. And that would be those spiral bonings on the side that can curve like that. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Jackie, DJ Jackie. <laughs> Uh oh, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. And she can't hear us either. Yeah, she was having trouble getting on. She okay? Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. Can hear First of all, Nicole, I want to pay a compliment okay. to Nicole. I sent her a, a private note, but she didn't respond. So I just want to say, you are looking fierce, and I want to be you. <laughs> Thank I you. I, I, hair. Yeah, I, mean, I love it. I love yes. it. Um, I had a, just a question on corsetry because I'm also really straight, but I assumed that if I do a corset and cinch it in on the waist, that the boning should sit on my hip bone and, and that will also hold it up. Does that? Yeah. Well, that's about, yeah. That's about how you hold up your chest. It either has to be over your shoulder or from your hips. <laughs> so that's what it would be. Your hips would be holding you all up. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank and you. What if you don't have going any? anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if you... Duct tape works wonders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make some hips. <laughs> Get those side if, you were, if you were making a, a corset for yourself or for somebody else, you use a pattern and you use measurements and it will make the thing. But if you're buying one, look at them someplace. If you have a chance or I'll post pictures of the couple I have, they are literally straight up and down. And no matter how much you cinch, you can't get a waist if you don't already have a waist or if you're really hippie, it would never cinch in enough. So back to if you're making it, you can fix it correctly. And, but if you're buying one, which 
that's all I would ever do if I if I ever wanted one again, which is what I just did recently, is buy wasp waste and then it already has a curve. And then you just have to. And they get that too from if you wear the petticoats and stuff, that'll kick your hips out <laughs> and give you more hips too. Yeah, I'm making one for the end of the month as well. I'm going to a fashion show and it's high fashion, like like um runway, like uh oh, not wow. runway, um, what am I thinking of? Formal, high fashion formal. Wow. High couture. High couture. Yes. So I want to do a quilted, not quilted, like a, a puffy corset. Don't ask me what that is yet, but <laughs> it's something in my head and I got to work it out. <laughs> so this is really yeah, helpful. I, I at least, I at least know cosette. something. I'm seeing the wasp cosette. So the idea of that is it's giving you hips. Is that right? Hello? Yeah. She's, uh, we can't hear you, Brenda. The courses that you buy <laughs> online are literally straight up and down. They are, well, most of them usually, are, go on. Oh, sorry. No, no, they usually don't just, go that far down. They're usually like yeah. stop at the waist is what right. she's saying, well, right? Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. they usually are not over bust, <laughs> usually under bust, but I always buy everything under bust because nothing fits my bust and compared to my, the rest of my body. And then it, but it, if you look at them, they literally are straight up and down. So when you try cinching them, you, but if you buy wasp, if you're making it yourself, you can use the dimensions that are correct for your body or How will do we enhance your body. If you're buying one ready-made, go for a wasp waist. If you real, if that's what you're looking for, that's what I wanted. Oh, no, no, I just, I just heard of this. It sounds cool. And I seen the picture, but my question is, cause I want to put a link. Is there like a chat box link that we can put in here? No, huh? Yeah. Right where? On, on down at the bottom where uh -huh. it has like the two little people and it has the number 10 floating above it. Click that little people. Yeah. <laughs> Are you on your computer? I'm at my computer. Yeah. Okay. So down at the bottom, on the right. Yeah, on, on the right hand side. Little people. Little people. Oh, I'm, not, I'm sorry. Not the two little people. The one next to the two little people. The little message. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. So I saw this. This looks beautiful. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh wow. That's a great that, price too. I know. <laughs> I'm so tempted. I know. I'm really well, tempted. I'm gorgeous. But see, this is 1900, so it's going to be like more um, shapely than um, some of the other ones that we're talking about. That's very pretty. Would I saw would this, different? and this is terrifying. <laughs> I thought that's what you were talking about. A lot of those older <laughs> pictures were doctored. It's probably not actually cinching her in that much. They just go in and kind of paint down the sides. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> one of the YouTubers who's like into historical costuming went into hope that, um, what's it, Photoshop is the thing we've been doing for years. Mm -hmm. So they would take a black and white photo like that, or they would take a photo. And instead of actually having their corset cinch them in that much, they just went in and painted down the side. So it looked like they were a lot a lot thinner than they actually were or had tight laced so much that they would be like concerned about their organs. That's not actually a thing. They just made it look like that. And we kind of, oh, well, God filters before filters. Okay. Exactly. That's yeah. So scary to think that people were looking at that as an aspiration. Yeah. Well, no, they just actually, um, they made, they made clothing to fit what, they wanted it to fit. They didn't try to make their bodies fit what the standard was. Yeah, the but clothing they fit. still produced an image that was unrealistic is my point. Of course they did. Yeah. But we've been doing that for generations. That's so crazy. Yeah. All right. But Wait. ain't that what these females are doing now? Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. That didn't change. Ain't that 
Is that what these females are doing yeah. now? It's exactly the same thing. I was about to say, because when I just, I felt right and saw that. Yeah, that's the that they're doing now. It's back. You know, so short and what? Changes oh, yeah, very or much so. Ways to stomach their and, and changing it. It's true, but it actually they weren't. To make their yeah, but they're actually doing it with like surgery now. Whereas at the time they would just make the yeah, she went back in, they weren't doing it, they were faking it. Now actually doing it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, right. um yeah. Her just said I'm <laughs> blank for names. Um uh, just said something, it's petticoats. It's, I keep my family. Thank you very much. <laughs> but when family. you put on when you put on the petticoats, well actually if you look at that corset, you'll see it flares out the hips. And you put on your petticoats, it flares out. And they used to pad their bust. They would put on those under corsets, uh, what do they call them, chemises? And they would have ruffles all across the front. So their bust would end up two or three inches larger than it really was. So when they were done, they had this amazing hourglass figure, but only from an angle. It was all fake. Well, only from a so few angles. Because if you actually turn sideways, you've got a huge bust, huge hips, and a tight waist. Because so they were just interested in what the image looked like. Okay. What time period did it on this? Well, one of the things that, oh, I really liked was they, they padded their bust so much. Their bust was look inches bigger than it really was. And this was acceptable. Everybody knew they did it. Yeah. Sonia said, what what, what, what era is was this? What Sorry. time period? No, I said, I wanted to know what time period were men doing this to their pants? Because why are we doing all this? I've never seen men <laughs> at all. Men did it too. It? They just don't necessarily advertise as much or the information is not as as like available. But men wore courses too. To it wasn't just for us. photos. Oh, they didn't do it for men's photos usually. <laughs> kids, kids wore them too to get mm -hmm. like uh, used to it. Yeah, it. at a certain age, they started wearing corsets. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, my men... daughter has to wear them for dance, and she hates them. <laughs> Civil War uh, men wore corsets, and it was absolutely mandatory. And sometimes they, for their dress uniforms, they would loan corsets to each other because their everyday uniforms were not the same size. So they, and that's another expensive thing to own. So they would loan, I'm going to have a photo. I have to go see the general here. You can borrow my corset. Mm. Seriously. Weird. <laughs> wow. Uh. Well, they didn't pad their pants, so. There's also <laughs> the things that are just the busk parts in the front, not the ones that hook, but just the um, flat pieces that are like um, like a triangle piece. And then you hook your jacket onto that piece so that it's not a full corset. It's just that flat piece in the front, and they're very fancy. If you look those up, they're embroidered. They're, they have all sorts of detail. Wait, what is this? What is this? What you're um, a stomacher. Yes, thank you. A stomacher. So it's just like this triangle piece that comes like here all the way down mm -hmm. to your waist. And you put on like your, you know, your fancy coat and jacket and then you hook it onto the stomacher like right down here. And it's not a full corset. Wait, is that what I had talked about in front of the jacket? Is it similar to that? Oh, like the Vicky. Oh, it's kind of <laughs> like that, but it's bone. Like the entire thing has bones oh. in it going all the way down. And it'll have like embroidery and all sorts of fancy things. Those are easier to make, obviously. It's just one piece and it gives you that flat as long as your coat is tight enough. That you're wearing. Oh. Were those for men or They're women? Really cool. What's that? Were those for men or women? Women. Oh. Yeah. Let's see if we can find a picture. Oh, is this it? Oh wow. That's pretty. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And that's all that it is. It's just a piece that goes right there in your jacket. Um cute. <laughs> Or buttons to it, even. Oh, my computer don't want to act right in. 
Sonia, show oh, that that's... picture again. I missed it. Oh, I, I, I might go. Do you guys actually. know the customer, <laughs> um, Donner? I forget her first name. Morgan Donner. Morgan Donner. Uh, she did one of those. She's done some really weird stuff, neat stuff. But um, oh, you guys should look at her hair thing. Look up Morgan Donner and look up the hair through the ages. She ends up shaving her head at the end, and she's oh, actually really cool. cool. She has I hair down saw, her back. Watch it. Oh, it's amazing because oh. what's her first, name again? Morgan Donner. Morgan, Morgan Donner. Donner. And um, something about hair through the ages hair, something like it was that. like her last two videos so if you just go to her channel you should see it oh very I cool um so so um angelina you're you're doing something for your own project but are you also going to film that i am it's not going to be a tutorial it's going to be a vlog because i can't tutorial that because i have <laughs> no idea what i'm doing or to how to guide people into that foolishness whatever it becomes but um yeah i'm gonna i'm on, i'm just gonna vlog it because it's gonna be it's just gonna be kind of free flowing i right, expect right, right. it to be more like that so yeah i'm definitely gonna record and see what happens i i don't know I'm, uh, this is the first formal dress i've ever made and i am <laughs> freaking out i like what's her name the one that does she lives with her dad and the bird and all that. She does those like one day things. I forgot her name. She's a blonde. She does a lot of runway stuff. But I, I anyway, um, I, I'll admit it. But um, Jackie, are you, um, I'd like to volunteer you to do piping. <laughs> are you doing that next month? <laughs> oh, Carolyn, Carolyn, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> I never learned. I, I never learned. Myself. I missed you. So. You don't have to volunteer me. Sorry, Dee Dee. Sorry. Dee. Um, I already volunteered. I actually put it in the in our Facebook. I'm happy to show you how to do binding uh, bias. I, I I don't. But like like Valerie, I think the challenge is trying to come, start at the beginning, and then it it can just get so big. And so I like what Valerie did. I, I guess a question for Valerie now, are you is are you starting us on our way or are you taking us further into this? Where where <laughs> I I don't mind to keep going. Um I'd be interested in what people would want to do. Obviously you don't have to do an understructure, but it does help with the quality of how it looks because it can get kind of bumpy if it's not mm. and look kind of flimsy, you know, and not look very, I don't know, I don't want to say professional, but you know what I mean. Maybe so, uh, um, maybe another class on like the tips and tricks, like, yeah. um, like as you're going through the process, the tips and tricks through the process, because, yeah. you know, people can get real held up. Like when you talked about the part about sometimes the boning is in the same binding, yeah or you know in the seams and i'm right. trying to imagine that in my head and i can't yeah, I, was yeah. I guess the sewing piece is like a whole nother thing and it seems like really scary but it's it's really not um and like you sew the pieces together and then you'll have your seam allowances right on the inside you don't you don't press them open because that's going to make that very um easily okay. broken See, that's what i was thinking yeah. yeah you have to like fold them over right and i know that they mm -hmm. sew with a regular stitch and they'll sew it down and then flip it over and sew it back up so it's double stitched obviously you want to know it's the right fit first but mm -hmm. yeah you fold your seam allowances over to one side um and then obviously the same side on the other side of your corset if you fold all the seam allowances towards the back and then you top stitch them down. So they're all together and you're basically leaving the opening on the top and the bottom. And then you could just put your boning right inside the seam allowance after you top stitch down. But is it, okay, so we talked about layers. So are your layers together at this point and then you sew? So right. 
so both your so each piece you know you have all your pieces each of those pieces has two layers correct right, right. and you sew the two layers to the two layers not the one layer to the one layer no, and the one layer to one no okay. it's not two separate corsets that you put together no okay. each piece is two layers yeah okay all right oh exactly. now i'm confused <laughs> hmm. i'm sorry oh no i want i because i i don't know like i <laughs> I I, okay, because so. the boning, I she, thought it was the two layers and then the boning was in between the two layers. But you're saying the two layers is each one is like uses one piece. Yeah. Oh, right. And then yeah. the okay. that's, that's, the flat, next that's called flat lining. You just create your own fabric with, you know, the inner structure piece and the outer fancy fabric. And now it's one piece. Um, and then you sew okay. each of those together to make a whole portrait. And okay, do you have so now, go ahead, Sonia. What's that? Is there a go ahead, Sonia. Is there a special thread that you use to make sure it doesn't pop? Um, no, just a regular, just a regular thread. Um, yeah. There, the tricks that are tricky about it that. I mean, so it's really not that hard. The only problem is that fabric can stretch over time when you're sewing the pieces together. So it might be like, okay, I cut this out to my size and now I sewed them all together. Maybe I didn't sew it exactly on the seam allowance, then even a hair off, don't get stressed out about that. Then it can grow, obviously, panel. Since there's several panels, it can start to grow if you, you know, so what we do instead of using the patterns that have the seam allowance built in, you cut off that seam allowance on your pattern, you put it on your fabric and you draw it so you know exactly where to sew, if that makes sense, yeah. So, you know, you're like, okay, this pattern piece of McCall has, has five eighths seam allowance on it. Okay, now I have to sew in five eighths. Well, you could kind of screw that up. Instead, you take that pattern piece that's fat, that's the paper pattern, you take a ruler and you draw the 5-8 seam allowance on there and you cut it off. And so you have the pattern piece, you put it on your fabric, and you draw exactly where your seam allowance is going to be. Does that make sense? That's how they do it in theater. They don't use patterns that have seam allowances built in. We draw exactly where each of the... Um, sewing lines are and then we just bunk off a bunch of seam allowance it doesn't matter what and this is this is a good thing for people oh, okay. period okay. is you sew on that line because yeah. i am notorious one of the problems i have with quil quilting is doing that narrow stitch so but when i'm sewing clothes if you draw that line in chalk or mark you know where that line is yeah. it's brilliant yeah. that's what that's what's good with Katil because you can draw right on it. It's, it, you know, it's very simple to do that, like with a pencil, and it won't really show. You won't see it. Yes, Dee Dee. <laughs> okay, because see, my mind thought went totally different. Okay, so now I got my two pieces. So now when I sew them together, I'm, I'm going to do it this way. When I sew them together, I'm going to sew it where... I'm leaving like a little pocket. You understand what I'm saying? A little pocket in between. No, that's what I, I can slide that in there. Cause see, that's, that's what, right. what I'm thinking. So that's not right. Uh, uh. That's what I was thinking. Okay. You're talking about like if this was the fabric, and then there was another piece of fabric, and you sewed it like that, and left a little thing for the boning, like in the middle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking at first. That's what no. said no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, that okay. will just rip yeah. right out of your fabric. That yeah. it's the seam allowance. Once you sew your pieces together, you have your seam allowance. That usually in other garments you you seam open, right? You press open. Well, you don't press them open. You press them all to one side. Um, but but together. I'm not thinking of a seam allowance. I'm thinking of like an overlapping. Not a seam allowance oh. overlapping. That's what I'm thinking. Not a seam allowance or overlapping because I'm already got my two fabrics already together. My two layers together already. So I'm thinking of an overlapping. But 
Okay. Well, yeah, you do your tricks of the trade. Cause yeah, that that just made my head hurt even more. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah. it's just okay. that you create your own fabric with two layers. And then this is now one fabric. This is the outer piece and this is the inner piece. And now it's one. So when you sew each of these together. Yeah. When I do math, I automatically you? flat line. Okay. So I put one piece of fabric and the other piece of fabric. And then when I stitch, I stitch them together. So now they are one piece. Yeah, you can base them together because sometimes like if you are using velvet, velvet can be hard to sew, it can crush and kind of wiggle around. Yeah. So you can um, put it together before you sew the pieces together. 